Hi, and welcome to Hopkins Hot Seat. I'm Tom Hoffman with One to One Media, coming to you from Call Center Week in Las Vegas. And I'm joined today by Mike Hennessy, who's Vice President of Marketing at IntelliResponse. And today Mike and I will be talking about ways in which consumer preferences and behaviors are changing and leading contact centers to have to adjust the way that they approach customer service. Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, no problem, Tom. So Mike, what are you seeing with respect to these trends and how it's influencing the way that the contact center does need to operate? Yeah, one of the big things that we're seeing in the last probably two or three years that's changed considerably is the movement uh, towards self-service. So the idea that, you know, the technologies that we use every day, whether it's our iPhones or our social media channels, and just technology has permeated every aspect of life. And then that kind of bubbles up to consumers' expectations of how they want to interact with the customers. Uh, with the companies and, and uh, organizations that buy their products and services from. So what we're seeing is a real preference on the part of the consumer to be able to get answers when, where, and how they, they want to get them. And often those journeys start on digital channels. So I'd imagine also that you know, companies then also need a flexible environment to be able to respond to customers, whether they're um, emailing, using yeah. chat, or maybe even you know going across channels. Yeah, it's it's really actually uh, added a layer of complexity to the whole customer engagement process now. Where um, you know the phone channel hasn't gone away. It's just the notion that uh, these other channels, the digital channels, corporate websites, and social, and mobile, and all these ways of interacting with, uh, with customers have become a necessity. Uh, so contact centers are forced now to pivot and to change and, and to really adopt a, an omni-channel approach to how they engage with their customers. When you talk with clients and prospects about um, omni-channel, yeah. what, what are, they, are there common themes in terms of what they say to you in terms of the challenges they're facing and, and executing effectively? Yeah, yeah. I think one of the big things is um, is being able to align the channel to what the customer preference is and then being able, not, not uh, being able to break that customer journey. So if I have a question and I arrive on a corporate website and I ask two or three questions, let's say um, the organization has a virtual assistant or a knowledge base that does a good job of understanding the intent behind my question and delivering an answer, you want that information, and let's say I want to escalate to a chat or to a call later on, you want that information to be seamlessly communicated to the agent so then as the consumer I don't have to you know ask the same three questions again. So I think integrating all that knowledge and information together is a real challenge for folks in the new environment. And that's why knowledge management, which is you know a hot topic maybe 10 or 15 years ago, has now you know really changed in, in terms of how it's you know the dynamic has really changed. But the idea of being able to do, to gather information from all the different areas of the organization to get it in front of the customer at the right time when they need it, um, that's the big challenge that's facing the companies. Can, can you point to examples or an example of uh, any of your clients that you feel have really yeah. attacked this successfully? Yeah, I think for us we've had some really good success in the, in the banking uh, vertical, in the telecommunications vertical, in the utilities vertical, and in, in retail as well. I think any B2C organization really needs to be first and foremost out in front of this challenge. And, uh, the first one that comes to mind is uh, in Australia, actually. They're the, the second largest telecommunication provider, the public co office. And they actually, before they deployed our technology, 70% uh, of the folks who arrived on the website ended up in their talk, in their contacts and making a call. Um, six months after deploying our solution, that number's gone down to 24%. So, um, so you, you get the the benefit of um, cost savings that comes from keeping those informational calls that um, are best put into self service out of the contact center, and then you get the added benefit of um, the, your agents being engaged in conversations that are perhaps a little bit higher value um, and require that kind of interaction. So you get the best of both worlds: cost savings, um, a better online customer reducing customer effort, but on the agent side, your agents are now uh, a lot more um, utilized in those engagements that require their skills and their capabilities. And yet, ultimately, you have uh, more satisfied customers, too, I believe. Especially, the, you know, since we're seeing, uh, and research has shown that uh, customers are, are more willing to self-serve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it really comes from, as I, as I said earlier, uh, 
expectation that folks have, um, we're just so used to using technology now that, that the first point of contact between, we actually just finished a survey uh, that we did with uh, the Google survey product where we, where we pulled a thousand consumers and 58% of them um, uh, originated all of their customer service questions on the website. 43% of them were still on the website when they were either stuck in the IVR or unable to get their answer through another channel, right? So, so those kind of type of numbers um, really uh, demand a, a, a change in the way many organizations are approaching their digital self-service. I always say that, people say, oh, we've got a help section on our website or we've got self-service. Your whole digital strategy needs to be self-service. That's what the web's about, right? It's about convenience, it's about speed, it's about access to information. So um, that's what consumers want and that's what smart companies are starting to deliver. Can, can you also offer for us recommendations on first steps that organizational leaders should take to uh, start down the omnichannel path? Yeah, I, I think first thing is don't stereotype your, your customers. Do some research, understand where your calls are originating from, uh, understand what channels of preference your customers actually have, and then build your strategy and the technology investment around that. Great. Yeah. Well, Mike, thanks so much for your time. Hey, today. no problem. Yeah.